What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I uh, hope you don't mind, but to make things easy on myself, I'm kind of shooting this the way I used to shoot my videos. Uh, the sort of first person hands-on view. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a big deal for this video, but if you guys were hoping to see my face, uh, you're going to have to check out one of my other videos. But uh, anyway, this is going to be a pretty simple video, uh, sort of giving you guys five tips on how to make your loop easy. And what I mean by that is most of these are going to be simple tips that will help you when it comes time to fill and drain your loop. Uh, most of us experienced system builders have sort of figured these things out along the way with trial and error. Uh, but hopefully we can spare you some, uh, some headache in the future because believe it or not, uh, oftentimes depending on how your loop is configured, uh, filling it and draining it, and even worse, uh, disassembling the build after you've drained it can be a pain in the ass if things aren't configured properly. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab the camera here. Uh, we're taking a look again at the View 31 build because uh, the way this thing is configured is about as easy as it gets when it comes to filling and draining this loop. So I sort of sure to show you guys some of the things uh, that I did with this build that uh, makes it very easy. The first tip is if possible use a pump res combo. Now not only is this going to save on having to buy additional fittings and also figure out how to route tubing and that sort of thing, it just makes it extremely easy to feed liquid to your pump so when it comes time to cycle your pump off and on to prime the loop, uh, it just makes things really easy and uh, installing a pump res combo is typically easier than um, you know the alternative which would be running tubing from the reservoir to the pump. Now the second tip while we're on the subject is the reservoir itself. Uh, when possible, use a large reservoir. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is I see a lot of people that buy the pump res combos and they tend to come with a smaller reservoir. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually purchase the reservoir tube by itself to upgrade to a larger size. Now in this particular build this is a 300 mil res, uh, but I recommend in any mid-size tower if you can do anything between 200 and 300 millimeters, uh, not only are you going to kind of fill up the space better, but the the biggest benefit to having a large reservoir means that when you go to initially fill and prime the loop, the more liquid that you can have in here, um, the less often you're going to have to cycle that pump off and on. And with a large enough reservoir, depending on how complicated your loop is, there may be enough fluid in this reservoir right away to almost completely fill your loop, um, which Again, it's just one of those things that makes, you know, makes it easier in the beginning. Tip number three is radiator orientation. Now, it's extremely common to have a front-mounted radiator. And keep in mind that when it comes time to drain the loop, you're going to be relying on gravity for all of the liquid to come out. So, if at all possible, or, you know, if you can just make this a priority, especially with the front radiator, try to have your ports at the bottom of the radiator as opposed to the top. Now in some circumstances you may not be able to do that or you may want the ports at the top just for looks or the way that you plan on routing your tubing, but I can assure you that this is going to work out a lot easier if your ports are at the bottom because it's going to be much easier for the fluid to drain out. And I know that sounds like common sense but it's something that can easily get overlooked in the heat of the moment when you're just sitting here trying to figure out how you're going to configure your loop and you're not necessarily thinking about long term how easy it's going to be to drain it. The fourth tip and kind of along the lines of what I just mentioned that seems like common sense but it's often overlooked has to do with your fill port on your reservoir. Uh, try to position your reservoir in such a way that it's going to be easy to get at the fill port. Now in this particular instance I've actually uh, installed a fill port at the top of the case that just connects to the top of the reservoir so obviously this is extremely easy I just unscrew this, fill it up, screw it back on and I'm good to go. But uh, you know especially in tighter builds 
you know, people can get hung up on how they're going to get everything to fit in the build. And then when it comes time to fill the loop with the fluid, they realize that they can't get to the fill port or there's no good way to even route uh, a flexible hose or something in there. Or, or maybe they can, but it's just a real pain. So just think about that as you're configuring your loop and figuring out where everything's going to go. Now for tip number five, I've saved this one for last because in my opinion, uh, it's the most important. And again, it's one of those things that might seem obvious, but that's including a drain valve in your loop. Now it's not impossible to drain your loop without one. I know plenty of people that put together and take apart systems without a drain valve, but I can assure you it is a million times easier to do uh, with the drain valve installed. Now just a couple uh, words of advice. You want to try to install this drain valve at the lowest point in your loop, kind of how I've done here, and at the opposite end of the fill port in your reservoir. And that's because in order to push the fluid out of your loop, you need to open up the reservoir so that the air can move into the loop and push the fluid out. So just keep that in mind when you're configuring everything. It can be a little bit tricky at times figuring out where you're going to include your drain valve because depending on how much room you have in your case, uh, there is some additional fittings that are required to include that. But if you can get it close to the bottom, it's going to work out well for you in the long run. Now, aside from the obvious benefit of being able to easily drain your loop when it comes time to flush it or disassembler or whatever. The reason I feel that it is so crucial to have the drain valve in your loop is when it comes to leak testing. Uh, or, God forbid, you spring a leak uh, down the road while the system's running. Uh, you want to be able to drain the fluid out of this loop as quickly as possible. And without a drain valve, if you have to sit here and try to take things apart, um, it's just going to be that much harder to do. So it's nice that if you're priming the loop or leak testing and all of a sudden you notice a leak somewhere, uh, it's nice to have that peace of mind of knowing that you can quickly drain the fluid out, address that, and then move on. Now it should go without saying that if you do happen to notice a leak somewhere, hopefully when you're leaks testing, you're powering your pump externally and your components aren't actually powered on. And then of course, if you happen to be running your PC and notice fluid somewhere, you're going to want to shut down immediately, disconnect your power supply, uh, and make sure that you're not going to have um, your components running. But that being said, this is just another failsafe, knowing that you're going to be able to quickly relieve the system of the fluid so that you can address the problem. That's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope that some of you found this helpful. As always, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I always appreciate you guys checking out the channel and hope to see you in the next video.